Welcome, City State 2 fans, to City State 2 with Omnius Prime. Episode 24, Economic Analysis with Professor Omnius Prime. I've set myself uh, something of a Mission Impossible task here. I'm going to try to make an economic analysis of the economic model that Andy has given us in City State 2. Interesting. And uh, I'm going to do my best. Now, one of the things I am going to do is really explain point by point each of the aspects of the economic model Andy has given us. And I will show you how to use or abuse these features that Andy has given us in the economic model to your benefit. Show you how to um, <clears throat> make the best use of it. And when you're looking at the screens and if you're you're kind of wondering what's it all about Alfie well I'm going to explain how the screens different screens work what you should be looking at and and paying attention to so what I am going to do is is give you the good the bad and the ugly of the economic model of city state 2 but before I get into my dissertation, I wanted to um, um, basically, now that I've, I've gotten started building a new city and I I'm kind of can um, um, remember why I, I, I liked playing the game. Um, and it's nice now that Andy's finished the game, I can now play the game and not have updates just, you know, doing weird stuff to, to my city like it did to like Andy did to Omnius Prime with the 1.41b update from hell that ugh, just totally destroyed just really wrecked it um, as you can see I've got level 7 out of 7 high income housing <laughs> if you look I've only got 70,737 in population okay so I've got this big built-up area, and yeah, <laughs> that's all that's built up, okay? But I was able to achieve this kind of high density, um, and I have level 6 out of 6 office. Man, I hadn't seen these buildings for a while. Um, but as you can see now, i got a whole bunch of 6 out of 6 office. I've got 4 out of 6. I've got... Uh, I think one or two, there's one in the back there that's a five out of six retail, okay? I'm going to show you more about all of this later, uh, how I achieved this. But um, let's first of all t talk about um, um, the economics, okay? So where do I want to start? I think I'm going to start with the good, which is going to be, let's look at the economy screen okay over here on the left we have what I like to call the cyclotron of fortune okay because basically the the particles in essence go both ways very standard retail I mean residential up top begets retail retail begets manufacturing manufacturing begets office office begets jobs okay level six out of six 2700 employees right here okay big time jobs 2684 okay so offices are, are, are where you get that the big job growth okay and probably also good paying jobs so I like the way Andy gave us a visual representation of how um, the economy works and so we know that um, here we have the the lower income group as like a 0 0.094 factor to retail growth or the number of jobs so 0 0.94 uh, jobs in the retail sector per new low income 0.1 jobs so one out so you need 10 people to get one job okay here you'd need 11 people to get one job okay and 
here you'd need uh, well basically 10 people to get one job so they create demand for retail okay now what affects retail taxes and policies right at the moment my policies are having no effect on retail okay total growth bonus 19 percent okay so this number here will be affected by that number okay so it'll be 0 0.105 times 19 percent for how many jobs get created then we come down here from retail okay we have several factors for basic manufacturing exchange rate education taxes policies for advanced manufacturing we have inflation instead of exchange rate education taxes policies okay all pretty standard here so here we have a I have a minus growth bonus of 100, minus 132 percent on the advance I have a plus of 120 percent okay so big growth bonus in advanced manufacturing and now I'm going to explain why I'm doing this then we come down to office okay now one of the factors for office economic freedom <coughs> screens up <laughs> I, I love these little information screens you know a whole lot of information <clears throat> in 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 a couple of little screens so it's really nice so here I'm kind of dogging it with my um, did I run clock yet just better make sure that I ran some clock to make sure that all my stats are working correctly okay let's come over here real quick ah, approval whoops not that not that yeah okay so yeah, I got my stats warmed up. So let's go back to economy screen. So the economic freedom, I'm dogging in a little bit at, at, at 49. I guess I could use some policies maybe to try to um, um, say reduce civil rights and increase economic freedom if I want to boost office. My education's given me a plus 44% boost, taxes plus 10, policies minus 13, okay? And I just, I, um, <clears throat> another one of the things I love about um, um, the game is the interaction of policies with the economics, okay? So it, it gives, it, we can have choices as far as what is our, our end goal, and we set our policies this way. They are going to have effects on the economy. So we have to, if we want to get one thing, we're probably going to have to give up something else. Um, so I like the interplay of policies and the economic model here. So this right here was really a nice um, 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 way to, to explain how each of these um, um, types of business are affected by um, um, the economic model. Now, one of the things now Andy has chosen here is, is basically I need to talk about um, economic modeling as far as you have simulation type games that try to simulate an economy and then you have represent you know and, and that's like a city skylines and the now uh, uh, prematurely abandoned uh, defunct new city okay simulations they use agents they try to simulate an economy now we have the representative style of, of, of modeling which is done by cities XXL and now city state two and this is the style that i really like i'm not worried about you, you know um, trying to simulate everything um and trying to get some kind of supposedly realistic economy kind of like close enough for government work it's basically let's you know represent things in total uh and not you know, burn, not, not create a, a, a programming burden or a, a, a burden on the CPU. So let's come back up here. So let's see. Now, the other really good thing that Andy did was population screen. Social ladder, okay? Here, we, if, on the bottom here, we see the policies, uh, unemployment, taxes, education, inflation affect getting from the lower class to the middle class now to get from the middle class to the upper class once again policies unemployment taxes affect 
getting from middle to upper. But here, instead of education and inflation, we have corruption and freedom. And freedom is economic freedom. So, as you can see, uh, I'm, not qu I'm not really doing myself any favors with this low economic freedom index. Um, and if I wanted to, I could maybe create a custom policy, change one of them to, you know, reduce civil rights, which I have a very high number of, um, and, and increase economic freedom to help to try to boost this score up, okay? So I like this. You know, if you need to know how to get from, from lower to middle, it's right here. From middle to upper, it's right there. This Andy gives a nice explanation of how to get from lower to middle to upper class. So that was a really good job. Okay? Now, let's talk about the bad. Mm. Now... Here we have advanced manufacturing, <clears throat> level four, okay? That's it. There is no level five. There is no level six manufacturing, basic or advanced, okay? Because of that, we're going to end up having to um, zone just a ton, just an unbelievable amount of... Um, um, manufacturing factories because um, um, they're just too small. We needed level 5 and, and level 6 manufacturing so that, you know, like maybe an 8 by 8 and yeah, Andy said that he had it on the, on, on the drawing board, so to say, but don't do us any good on the drawing board. <clears throat> we need it on the game board. So, Big, you know, like an 8x8 with level 5 and level 6 manufacturing, man, that would have been nice. Now, we do have the mining here, okay, primary sector. This is kind of like, as you can see, this is uh, putting out 798, and one of these guys puts out uh, 231. But then again, if you multiply 231 times 8, you're going to have uh, about 920. So, yes, four of them in an 8x8 is more powerful than this but not by much but i tell you what i can place that primary sector boom and it's built i don't have to worry about level ups now <clears throat> and as you can see um i've got my carbon capture plants around here okay i work the inflation angle now in this game i'm actually doing farms okay for pollution control I mean, these things, plus 17.5, ooh. Now, this is a 5 by 10 farm lot. That's the smallest farm lot you can make, and it's cost is like 30. But the way farms work, the way I found is work with lots of small farms. When you can, you can stretch a farm out to a, about 80, I think, 72 or 80. So you can, I made big farms, but they produce very little more than um, um, what the, the smaller farms did. So, small, minimum sized lots. Now, why am I doing that? Okay. In Omnius Prime, I had that at the end of, the, uh, of my city development there when Andy dropped in the new garbage feature and created this massive pollution problem for me in my city. Um, I'm very wary about, okay, now cutting down on the um, um, pollution. So pollution control is like a big thing for me. One of the ways to do pollution control is to make sure that I don't have basic manufacturing factories, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm using the um, mining lots and farms because both of these are basic manufacturing so I'm using these now to chew up my BM demand basic manufacturing demand so that whenever I st so so that when I zone uh, at manufacturing it will only build advanced manufacturing okay 
so I am no longer building basic manufacturing plants, only advanced. And it's because I'm making sure that my um, basic manufacturing, you see that minus 400? See that little red spot there? Yeah, no moss basic manufacturing factories. So for pollution control, I know exactly where my polluting mining lots are so I can place my carbon capture next to it and take advantage of it. Farms, I can place next to these dirty mining lots because pollution doesn't really affect them. <laughs> so, um, so these are like clean basic manufacturing so for the farms. They don't produce much, they don't make much money, but um, and they're taking up some space. Now, here's the other thing that's a cheat, okay? I've got basic manufacturing set to um, 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 minus 400, right? So I have no demand. But any time I want to place a mining lot, I can do so. And it will, and I don't need any demand, okay? So I like to call this quantum physics zoning, okay? I can, we're basic manufacturing, we can zone without demand, okay? Quantum physics zoning, basic manufacturing, because when you place a mining lot or a farm, regardless of demand, it will build and fill and function. And if the basic uh, manufacturing demand goes down negative, these buildings will never, you know, become abandoned. So these, so this is a, a cheat here where this quantum physics zoning, where you can zone mines and farms without any basic manufacturing demand. And by doing so and keeping a negative here, you'll never have another basic manufacturing factory in your city again. Okay. Now, something else that's wrong with with manufacturing okay i like to call these factories quantum physics manufacturing you, and, and andy man could you imagine having a building here quantum physics manufacturing the slogan we manufacture everything from nothing huh Quantum physics manufacturing. We manufacture everything from nothing. Sadly, Andy did not give us resource inputs. Okay, so this is, so, so the manufacturing is just a total sham. Okay, just a total sham. We don't have resource inputs. It's what we really should have. So Andy made a major mistake here not doing that. Now, Sadly, and ironically, in his original city-state game, he had resource inputs going into factories. He had a small little um, 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 recipe set up where, you know, like gold and oil and something makes some kind of goods. So he had a very simple um, um, table of... of of um, recipes of different types of resources going in and and getting manufactured to produce some kind of um, end product okay like retail goods or or food goods or something like that so Andy had done it in in the original city-state that was actually the best feature of his game along with global market pricing and stuff and sadly, he didn't bring it into this game. And then when I talked to him about, well, you know, uh, uh, about you know why he didn't do that, how I thought that was the best thing of, uh, of the original City State game, he was like, oh, I don't want to do that. So if you don't do it, Andy, you're going to have nothing but a sham economic model, okay? And that's really sad. So what we should now, I can see Andy's point where, you know, here we have like advanced. Uh, basic ore, advanced ore, and we have oil and gas, okay? So we got four different resources, and if we add farms, we had to have farm products, okay? So does Andy want to, you know, like say, 
okay, we've got to route uh, X amount of, of ore to some factory to produce something or Y amount of, of um, um, advanced ore or like sending basic ore to a coal factory to run the coal factory, I mean the coal power plant or advanced ore to the nuclear power plant, you know, like it's uranium, to run the, ura um, the the nuclear power plant and the thing is is yeah that could get ridiculous but what I thought is you know Andy when it all comes down to it whether it's basic or advanced or whether it's oil gas or farm products they're all one thing resources so basically the thing should have been a factory will just take X amount of resource in whether it's a basic you know whatever level but you just your recipe book would be simple okay you produce resources doesn't matter which flavor so resources go to a factory they get turned into a finished product which we i would call retail goods i was thinking about how do you make farm farms important and i was thinking well you know every other game uh farms are a separate building but not in this game but i was thinking okay, do we really need food as a separate item? And it was like, no, we really don't. We only really need to produce one thing, retail goods. Retail goods could be anything from food to you know, retail goods for consumption to basically like industrial goods that, that, that you know, factories need... need um, 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 machines and stuff like that and, and businesses they need you know business type equipment computers and desks and all this other good stuff but when it all comes down to it it would just be retail goods so Andy if you don't set up some kind of simplistic you know resources to manufacturing to create retail goods um, nice simple thing so that we can have because what's missing is product pricing there is this simplistic you know we just create exports but we don't have any export pricing okay which is sad and import so we have no import pricing okay so that was all missing and it would be so nice if we had factories producing retail goods that can be sold on the market and have a market price and have a global market price so that we can you know trade or even like maybe a city market price but um yeah just a big fail here on 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 manufacturing not having the the high density manufacturing and forcing us to to build all these rinky dink little you know manufacturing plants so now let's see um, so yeah talked about the quantum physics manufacturing and no resources so and I yep so I pretty much have covered I think what's the bad now let's get to the ugly okay over here on the right we have this inflation model now Originally, Andy had a three-factor um, inflation model. Um, one was unemployment, one was tax rates, and I can't remember what the other one was. It might have been housing demand or something, but he had three factors. Then he decided he was going to make it kind of like, you know, improve the inflation model. Well, what he did was took what was basically... A, a, a good inflation model and he gave us this overly thought out garbage inflation model this is a total failure Andy you just totally screwed it up I'm going to explain why and 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 what you should have done okay should have stuck with the three factors in this economic model <clears throat> basically only unemployment and tax rates which is what's missing in here, have any real relevance for, for, for inflation. And why do we need a good inflation model? Because 
inflation is kind of like the economic traffic cop so that you don't do unrealistic nonsensical things like I'm doing right here with the super low tax rates okay my inflation rate should be sky high but there it's not because tax rates are not modeled and that is why the inflation model here is a total failure okay first of all let's look at currency valuation so he gave us currency valuation now if you notice I've got I bought two million dollars of USD as soon as I was done with the last episode and I, I was thinking and before I started zoning up and running clock I decided one of my goals is pollution control so I decided I'm gonna buy up all the USD I can okay to affect my exchange rate I started out about 10.08 uh, is an exchange rate so I jacked it down to like 3.76 so what happened is mm, over here exchange rate basic manufacturing notice that it's a minus 22 percent well before I did the exchange rate trick my exchange rate effect on basic manufacturing was uh, about a plus 10 or so after I bought the two million dollars of US you know, of USD it dropped down to minus 14 okay I wanted to create a negative effect here okay because like I said I'm trying to reduce basic manufacturing to reduce pollution so I used buying USD to to abuse this exchange rate effect on basic manufacturing now what does exchange rate have to do with basic manufacturing and whether a business uses basic or advanced manufacturing absolutely nothing okay absolutely nothing this just this is well there is a saying it's called if you can't dazzle them with brilliance baffle them with bullshit and this is like the perfect example of Andy now he wasn't able to dazzle us with brilliance so now he's trying to baffle us with bullshit okay so exchange rate has nothing to do with manufacturing okay what exchange rate has to do with is the pricing of imports and exports and since we have no import and export pricing in the game it is totally irrelevant exchange rate currency value much ado about nothing and they're basically a rebel without a cause okay so um, whether I have dollar reserves the GDP per capita or the money printed none of this stuff has anything to do with whether something is made by basic or advanced manufacturing this is an artificial little game thing it here if you look exchange rate is nice e and easy to draw a line into exchange rate here in basic manufacturing okay but this is wrong and I can use abuse this now to kill basic manufacturing okay same thing with education let's get back up here now as you can see I've got a 94 education score 70,000 people education score 94 okay so what I'm doing here is I'm using education or abusing education see look at that huge 100 minus 109 minus education factor plus here okay once again, I, I mean, I told Andy oh, the, over the last several months the ex education effect on basic manufacturing to advanced manufacturing is too exaggerated. This shouldn't be like m more than about 50, 60 percent, okay, depending on, on how. So in Omnius Prime, my education level was down about 86. I was actually trying to, to build up a little basic manufacturing um, um, demand and I didn't play with the USD so I was in Omnius Prime kind of trying to, to to encourage a little more basic manufacturing demand 
oh man after Andy dropped the, um, the the garbage feature in and totally screwed up the, the pollution effects in my city um, yeah <laughs> I learned not to burn man so I'm going to get rid of the basic manufacturing demand and as I showed you I can cheat I can build mines and farms anytime I want so basically I can create demand from nothing <laughs> quantum physics zoning gotta love it okay now trade balance okay as you can see the exchange rate gives a nice you know positive effect here for my trade balance so I'm using this now to help gimmick the trade balance now what was the first business I built in this city yeah you saw me a mining lot in, in this case an oil well okay immediately gave me this big plus 50 percent effect on trade balance built the airport so that i get the plus 10. and um one thing if you turn the airport off it still gives you the plus 10. so the uh, so so actually like right now my airport is not on <laughs> um so here all of these things here are absolutely meaningless as far as inflation for this economic model okay once again i can use these things to now cheat this minus 0.2 trade balance effect okay so now since we do not i i mean it just this is really weak okay since we do not have actual um, a market for for imports and exports and product pricing because Andy didn't want to take the best feature of city-state and use it in city-state too and chances are he's not going to do it he's going to do the same mistake again in city-state 3 okay so all of this is much ado about nothing that really has nothing to do with the inflation now one thing exchange rate does not drive inflation inflation does drive exchange rate now the one thing okay an imbalance of supply and demand when you have a huge demand but limited supply yes prices jack up real quick we're seeing this right now um, because we have a supply uh, uh, issue because when China gets COVID and gets a pandemic they stop producing our goods because we no longer have made in the USA as our slogan we have all our manufacturing you know cheap Chinese crap and then when we get to the ports well we have another supply chain problem because now the ports the people are sick so they can't unload the ships the ships start stacking up okay on top of that we had a trucker problem all of a sudden independent truckers realized they were getting ripped off that this 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 new idea of become an independent trucker be your own boss own your own business it was a big sham they weren't hardly making any money i mean walmart got smart early uh, uh many months ago and decided to start paying their truckers a hundred ten thousand dollar salary okay because the truckers were not making money um just barely they were just eking by and and this was the whole thing the scam of independent truckers was to stop them from being employees so that the trucking companies could cut their expenses and ex employee exposure and they and they also made a lot more money because they were ripping off the truckers and not paying them by the hour paying them by the load and then they'd give them uh, really weird um, times to deliver it, it, it make their uh, delivery uh, trip much longer than it should have been but still they're only going to get what the load says not what the amount of time they spent so it just th this was all much ado about nothing and a total farce so now we come down to um, inflation the bottom ones unemployment yes this is what you want 
A low unemployment rate, less than 5%, will force employers to increase wages, which in turn accelerates inflation. Now, what I have saw, I've right now I'm at 5% unemployment, okay? I'm going to drive it down deeper. I want to go 3% or less. Because what I'm going to show you is that that once I drive unemployment below this 5% figure he's talking about, the 0.9 factor just isn't going to change. And for months I told Andy that the range of unemployment is not high enough, okay? Because I ran 3% um, um, unemployment in Nominus Prime for a while, and I did not have uh, an unemployment contribution problem here. Okay, now housing demand, and uh, you know, tax rates, tax rates, tax rates. I kept telling Andy, tax rates replace housing demand with tax rates. Housing demand is kind of meaningless, okay, because once again, I can gimmick it. Okay, right now it's running a little high um, at 0.4 instead of usually like maybe around 0.2. So yeah, right now I'm all my inflation rate of 1.2 percent. Oh my gosh, that's that's super high. <laughs> but it should be super higher. Okay, so the inflation model is a total and complete failure. Sad. And it could have been just you know. Kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid, and it works. To, in this economic model, unemployment and and tax rates should have been the drivers. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh yes, yeah, so I got that. So, so yeah, this, you know, and printing money. Oh, let me show you, uh, as I'm showing you, I'm using the, the, the USD uh, dollar reserves as a cheat, okay, to control inflation, okay? Have you ever thought that you would buy USD to control inflation, to reduce basic manufacturing, to promote advanced manufacturing? You know, oh yeah, let's come back here for a second, okay. A lot of, I know a lot of people, or especially early on, how do I get from basic to advanced manufacturing, okay? Well, buying USD is part of the trick to, to, to create a negative exchange rate, okay? The other thing is jack up your education score and create uh, a big negative here, okay? So that everything wants to go over. So as you can see, man, I, I've got that big negative growth bonus for basic manufacturing solely to do pollution control okay now what's the other cheat that you can do no not legislation let's go to research space special buildings okay one thing I learned is that um, the research costs here for the special buildings are currency value dependent okay currency value dependent so it's kind of like they have a base usd cost okay so now when your currency value is low where where you have like you know 10 csd to a dollar your research cost is going to be high when you buy a ton of usd you drop your csd to a dollar rate down to like 3.76 you know like under four your research unlocking cost is going to be significantly lower so one of the cheat tricks you can use is before you want to do an unlock okay is that you just go in here you buy up your usd which is going to take some money of course and, and then you come back here you do your unlock and if you're kind of running a little short on the on the money, you can always sell your USD back and, and regain your money. Okay, but what you done can do is you can save a significant amount of money on your research cost just by buying USD just before you do the research cost. Okay, so this is another way that currency value 
can be abused as a cheat. And, you know, like I said, in this economic model, currency valuation has absolutely no place in it. Printing money has no place in it. Now, I did, I actually uh, printed a bunch of money just for grins to see the effect it would have on basic manufacturing. And of course I knew what it was. And yes, it, it, it went from like um, plus 10 to about, uh, uh, I think I, I did about 10, 10 printing of, of USD. Of course, what I did is I did a uh, control off the late use task manager to end the task. I didn't save that. So that's one way that you can um, um, cheat the um, um, the economic system by buying by by abusing currency value. now and like I said you know I used printing USD to actually try to you know boost up the um, exchange rate effect on ba basic manufacturing to try to reduce the uh, negative growth bonus but in this game man control pollution get rid of the basic manufacturing really watch your pollution so I think what I'm going to do now is um, take a little break and this segment and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you some cool tricks. Now how did I get all this high density stuff going? I've learned some new tricks on zoning and stuff. So I'm going to kind of wet my whistle, get myself squared away and, and, and think through my, my next segment. And, oh, wait a minute, puta, here we go. Almost forget. Tax rates, tax rates, tax rates, okay? Now, this should not be allowed. My inflation rate should be sky high because I have super low tax rates. Uh, and inflation should get, get much higher if I drop my unemployment rate down. But right now, what I'm doing with these super low tax rates is I'm shaping my population. Now, I've, uh, I'm already up to 16% um, um, upper class, okay? Because now I'm trying to tilt the scale the other way as far as I want a whole lot of upper class in my city and not much middle class or lower class. So I'm doing this right now to basically cheat my way up. Yeah, I could have gone one in one here to have a little better... Um, social ladder boost into um, both of these classes by dropping taxes just a weeny bit more. But, <laughs> as you can see, man, let's see, well, I, I'm making 5000 spending 62.6, so I, I'm only losing 57000 per month. And that's only beca because I've got uh, uh, minus 1260 coming in from my national treasury of $139 million. So no, I can't do this forever, but I don't need to. Right now, this is all about jumpstart the economy. And, and now it's all about um, 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 shaping my population, uh, my demographics, shaping my demographics. I want more upper class. So I'll be back in a moment and I am going to uh, show you how I basically use very little space and, and, and population, and I'm already maxed out seven out of seven on all of my residential uh, buildings. In finishing up uh, with this final segment here, <clears throat> I wanted to touch base on, um, f you know, finish up my prime time with Professor Prime. My economic uh, forum is that, um, um, when I was giving you that, that example about, um, um, you know, the American example of, of our current inflation problem with, with the supply chain issues, well, there was one issue I forgot to mention, and that was <clears throat> our greedy, corrupt big corporations decided that in order to make more money, <clears throat> they came up with a new inventory plan called Time to Market. Okay. Since years ago, things were running really nice. They knew that, you know, as far as getting stuff uh, manufactured in China, getting it delivered here to the U.S., that they could cut down their inventory levels, cut their costs, make more money. Okay. 
Now you wonder what's the harm in that? Well, we're seeing it right now. Because of those supply chain issues, because of this new um, um, inventory scam of time to market with the reduced inventory levels in our country, guess what? That is what helped to trigger even quicker a supply shortage, which jacked up prices, okay? And where's the harm in that? I mean, the corporations get to jack their prices up. They get to jack up their profit margins. Sounds like a win-win for the greedy, corrupt corporations. But for us consumers, we get stuck paying those jacked up prices, okay? Which cuts down our ability to consume or to save money for the future, okay? So part of this other problem is, is, is corporations will lie, cheat, and steal to make money, okay? It's the bigger they are, the more corrupt they are. So over here, um, participation rate, 77.8%, okay? Um, in, in America, we have 3.7% uh, unemployment. And our labor participation rate's about 62.2%. So it just, you know, I mentioned this to Andy, it just, it seems like the labor participation rate at, at I've got 5% unemployment and I'm at 77.8% participation rate. Man, that sounds like a, a, almost a slave economy. I mean, it just, it, it, there aren't no old folks. It just seems the demographics and, and, and enough kids. It just doesn't seem like uh, uh, a labor participation rate should be so high. You know, it should be 10 to 15 points lower. So, um, and of course, of course, on the flip side, then that would mean that, that um, um, like, say, you'd have more old folks collecting, um, um, you know, welfare benefits as far as uh, Social Security, Medicare, things like that. Okay, so it just seems like, you know, it's a hot labor participation rate, but it's probably what's helping make the economy uh, go and stuff. Now, in 1969, uh, I was an army brat. My dad got uh, orders to, to go to Korea. So we moved from Fort Dix, New Jersey to Long Beach, California. And, uh, oh, you know, my, uh, the choices were... Uh, stay in New Jersey, move uh, near New Jersey, or go to Long Beach. Well, my dad and I voted for Long Beach. My mom voted for staying in New Jersey. So we went to Long Beach. So when I first get there, okay, we, my dad got a, uh, an apartment about mm, four blocks from the beach. I mean, man, that was awesome. Just had a real quick walk to the beach. So when I first get there, I'm on the beach and I'm looking out across the, uh, into uh, Long Beach Harbor and I'm seeing all these like little islands with these with palm trees and these these um, kind of um, um, shaped, uh, you know, buildings and stuff. So I was wondering, what the heck's out there? Is there like maybe an amusement park out there? Well, what I found out was that those were oil wells out there. Of course, having come from New Jersey and not seeing oil wells, to coming to Long Beach, California, you know. Um, yeah, those were oil wells, but they disguised them and made them look cute so that um, um, they didn't look at all like oil wells. So this is kind of, you know, it's kind of like uh, my homage to, to, to my thought about, yeah, when I was the, the oil wells of Long Beach, okay. And as you can see, I did a little accessorizing here of the beaches. Now... Uh, let us see, what am I, oh yeah, let's talk about demand. Now, you notice I've kind of jacked up my demand bars, okay? And I'm going to try a little experiment here. Now, I'm pretty sure that I have all uh, four by fours, four, level fours on my advanced manufacturing. And I've got 671 saved up, okay? So now, here's a little thing. I'm going to explain zoning in terms of supply and demand, okay? Our demand bar here, that's our demand, okay? Yeah, don't even touch that low-density stuff. 
our zoning lots that's our supply okay so I've got 671 advanced manufacturing um, demand here so if I zone two lots it's probably gonna try to to make something two lots with with half okay what I want to do is I'm going to just make zone one lot okay I want to see if it'll go straight to level four instead of going through levels one two and three previously now I've got some built-up um, housing demand here okay I'm going to play the same trick. Now, I'm just going to do one at a time. This is my standard over on this side. I'm just going to do a 4x4. Four four. Okay. Ah, Andy! While I'm here doing playing with the zoning tool, I, this is something I've been... I like this. Okay, Andy. I love this new, the way it's, it's white and all this stuff. Now, I would like to have place a building that's facing this street right here okay six by six so if I go six by six ah, where's that? see it's real tough to see the numbers okay hold on let me pop up here you find a corner that uh, is empty right here I'll just do it right here so if I want to go on the avenue okay and I go six by six okay I got it there now if I wanted to do it this way you see how the six by six will flip this way here I'm getting a six by five but I can't get a six by six going this way and of course when I'm trying to show you this I'm not getting the uh, six by five, six by six. Okay. Oh yeah. Is I would come in this way and try to zone up. Okay. You see, I can't do six by six. I can do six by five going this way, but I can't do six by six. And here, I'm actually purposely starting from the middle of the road so that I can zone on on this avenue. So you see. That was just something I've been trying to talk to you about for so long that sometimes I can't get a 6x6 six six in certain directions. I only get the 6x5. So now let's come back down here. And the bug reporting time. So now, I'm not sure. I've got three choices here for this residential building of, of what's going to build. And I've got the one choice for the advanced manufacturing. Now, what I want to see is if it'll, which level it'll start with. Uh, let's just go over here. Where's my my lot? So, let's run some clock. Because what I've noticed is that... Okay, let's see what we've got here. So, we're starting out at level 1 out of 7. And I'm starting out here at level 1 out of 4. Now, I have run clock where... where I've zoned a couple of lots, and they popped up uh, to a, a high level real quick. So what is this guy? This is going to be low income. Okay. Uh, I obviously also need a, a few more. Okay. Now, let's see. What am I going to do here? If I go control... So that's two six by fours. Okay, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a six by four here. Yeah, and I'll do a four by four. No, nope. oopsie. I know what I forgot to do. So focused on the the width. Okay. So this is going to be now 6 by 5. So I can kind of split it in, in half. Whoops. That went over. 6 by 5. 4 by 5. 
I'm going to leave some space here for maybe police and hospital or school or something like that. So now, so what I'm trying to do, let's see, what do I get here? Okay, this was what I, okay, I ran the clock, clock too slow here. I ran the clock fast. Look at that. I'm popping up to seven out of seven, okay? Seven out of seven, five out of seven for high, okay? So what I did is I screwed that experiment up. Let's, I, I don't know how much, oh, I've got a ton of demand. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if this will run clock fast. Okay, one out of four. But you notice it's already at four out of four. I mean, that is running clock. So, <clears throat> supply and demand of, of playing with the housing and stuff. Now, I've just dropped my housing demand a whole bunch. Let's take a quick look. Now, remember, I was at 1.2%. I went from 0.4 housing demand to 0.1, okay, just by doing that. And now what I learned is this, it's kind of like a loaded spring effect, okay, is <clears throat> if you load up your demand bar and then you zone a f only a few lots, they'll z and you run clock fast, instant pop-ups. And now I go to st stage seven out of seven immediately. So the cost that I paid was only the cost for level seven out of seven. I didn't pay and I didn't have to do the demand for levels one through six, okay? So this is, this is kind of like pop-up zoning, okay? So, you know, it used to be, go in here, you, you know, the zoning tool, and, you know, just run wild, you know, and, and zone just tons of lots all at once. No, 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 okay? If you zone slow, you build up um, capacity, it's going to give you these instant pop-ups. Is that not a slick zoning trick? Now, um, bingo time. Here we go. High density. Look at look at that land value. Fifty three sixty six. Man. Okay. So people might have questions about land value. How do I drive up land value? Okay. Well, obviously. You notice I've got some parks in here. I've been putting in my fair share of parks, okay? And I remember that, that in, in the, the something about the, 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 those in-game messages about, about um, water area being, you know, more valuable land, okay? Kind of like beachfront property, okay? So I couldn't help but, but test that theory out. And so it looks really good. And here... Okay, look at my land value here at 38.77. It's pretty good, okay. Uh, here, I have a level five out of six retail. I haven't got a level six out of six retail yet, but it's coming, okay. So, um, um, one of the things that I've discovered is I do not know an exact ratio of commercial to advanced manuf to, a, to manufacturing. But all I know is you do not want to zone a lot of commercial if you want commercial to pop up, okay? And he, oh, way over here, I got that up to 5 out of 6, okay? This office is at 5 out of 6, which isn't bad. Uh, this is a retail that's at 4 out of 6. And it's probably going to be the next one to level up because all it's looking at 32.54 per square meter, <coughs> I've got land value. All I need is 1,200 points of retail demand. <laughs> Which, you're right, right? 90 is kind of uh, suck and win. So, lower level buildings will always eat up the demand first in smaller chunks, okay? But like I just showed you here, man, um, kind of reminds me, it's kind of like a low, you, you want to load up the spring, a loaded spring, zone just a few lots, run the clock fast, and then you start out boom okay now that's cheaper in terms of zoning demand okay so I don't know if Andy intended this but as I was starting this city I was starting to notice this phenomenon and the other thing was was that you know I hadn't seen these beautiful level six out of six offices 
uh, for a while because you know when we had the old demand bars scale of 3,000 I was getting them easy but when Andy cut the scale with these great new bars to 1500 that's when you know the bars fill up got his own got his own got his own so now with the the bars at like 2500 or so oh look at that office at 2600 and it's not quite uh yeah so see to get a level six office you need 2600 points okay of office demand and then you'll get about 27 about 2600 employees now this employee number will be dependent on tax rate the lower the business tax rate the more employees it will emplace employ now this used to be uh, 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 used to have a demand of 3,000 and I when when all of a sudden I was having trouble with the offices going up um, I was you know Andy this is too much you know um, but we didn't have like 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 the um, demand information like what it will take to get let the level ups okay we didn't have things like demand in here yet just land value so I was like well why isn't it going up so so yeah you got to load up your your spring load up your demand then zone very little and watch your buildings pop up like magic okay <laughs> and what happens getting seven out of seven high density high income this is what drives your land value to the max you know so it's all a combination of stuff now I've also in this small little area yeah Ooh, there's my underground oh look I got a lot more trains now look at that there's three of them right there cool I notice I seem to have more traffic all of a sudden which you know of course makes things look cool and I did my bus stops mm. so let's come over here let's drill down okay whoops I got my cover everything up okay so my metro stations I have right justified right here at just the top of the street and if I come over here now you can see my bus station my bus stops are right here at the end of the roads okay bus stops at the end of the roads okay and train stations where the the avenues connect to avenues so I have one two three four train stations basically when you come right down to it, it's one in each quadrant here okay so I already have public transit working so yeah I just I I didn't try this before and that's why I'm glad I, I ran clock slow and it like went oops and then when I ran the clock fast it went pow so um yeah pop-up zoning boys and girls load up the the demand spring zone very little and then watch those buildings pop up like magic okay I hope that you've enjoyed this this um, um, video uh, I hope that I've shown you um, that well despite the um, um, <laughs> incorrect economic assumptions and and some of the problems with the economic model I mean it works it's too easy for someone like me to gimmick as you can see inflation down to you know 0.8 and uh, I'm definitely now you notice look at my unemployment this is the other thing about scale I wanted to, to mention before I left okay popped up to 7% economy of scale is one of our, our big sayings in, in the business world okay same goes with cities now I'm gonna wrap myself out here I did make a boo-boo here early on go to yearly okay at the end of the last video one of the last things I said was grow slow okay so what I didn't do because I didn't grow slow so all of a sudden I had this spike in in slum dwellers okay got up to 153 why <laughs> because I had the airport open so I had to, to fix it, close it, okay? But then I had to come down here to um, border policy. As you notice, I mean, I had these at 10, 
100, 100. And that was like great for my city at Omnius Prime. I had to cut them down to 10, 10, and 30. So I've got fewer people coming in, okay? The whole key to success for, and you can see how my education score has dropped from 94 to 91 because I've had an influx of people come in. So now, when you have a small city and a small population, you know, you have to grow super slow, okay? Because small changes in population can really have an effect on things like the unemployment rate and stuff, okay? Now, as some of my off offices now go from five to six and I get those massive uh, uh, job um, positions filled, um, yeah, then, then it'll go back down to five or so. So when you have a small city, Statistics will fluctuate because you're dealing in, in economy of scale. A small scale will be affected more by numbers. Once you get up a couple hundred thousand, you know, adding these buildings in, you won't see any changes, you know. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. And I hope that now that I've shown you some cool tricks, um, like like you know the quantum physics uh, basic manufacturing zoning <laughs> where yeah you, you know just use abuse buying usd and and having a big oversupply of 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 you know uh, manufacturing or basically mining um you know using that exchange abusing the exchange rate like i'm doing here to get the negative exchange rate on the basic manufacturing effect, okay? Same thing why I decided to bump up education is I want that better effect. Um, I don't want any basic manufacturing factories. I can still zone as much mining and farming as I want and it will always build regardless of lack of demand, okay? So, I hope that uh, you've, you've learned a lot that you can now go into your cities and use some of these slick little tricks to, to um, um, make your cities more economically uh, uh, perfect.